Hi there, in the last video we plotted this line chart using Plotly and this is CO2 measurements from 1958 to the current date. Now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to create a bar chart and for each year of the data we're going to aggregate all of the measurements for that year and we're going to calculate the average and that will be represented as a bar in the bar chart. So we're going to have a bar for each year in the data and as before we're going to use Plotly to generate that bar chart. So let's go to VS Code and we're going to start by creating a new view so underneath our existing view here I'm going to create another function and it's going to be called yearly average CO2 and this is just going to be a normal Django view and it's going to render a plotly chart and add that to the context and this bar chart will build this later but what we're going to do first is we're going to explore some of Django's aggregation utilities so I'm going to stop the server and we're going to load up the Django shell here. And the command to do that, python manage.py shell plus, we've installed Django extensions, so we should have access to that command. Now once the shell's open, the model we're going to work with is the CO2 model. So let me expand this shell a little bit. And we have a CO2 model here that contains all the measurements we loaded in in the last video. So let's say that the year we want to look at is 1958, and that's the first year of the data. Now let's refresh our memory here on this model. So if we go to models.py, you see that we have two fields. We have a date field and an average field. Now the problem is we have a date field, so it contains a full date, the year, the month, and the day. What we need to do is extract the year from that date. So how do you do that using Django? So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a statement here, co2.objects.filter, and we're going to look at the date, and then if we use two underscores here and specify the year, we can set that equal to the year of 1958. And what that does is returns all of the objects from that year. And if we go to Django's documentation, we should be able to see uh, this section here under the query set API reference. There's a section here for the year. So for date and date time fields, this helps you get an exact year match. And the example Django's got is of a blog post, a blog entry. And it's filtering that entry by the year equals 2005. And below that, you can see we can also chain a greater than or equal, which will get you all posts on 2005 or above. So when you have a date time field like we do, in this case, a date field called date, we can use this syntax here and we can extract the year from that date. And that's what we're doing, and we're checking for a year equal to 1958. So that's the general setup of what we're trying to do for each year. We want to pull out all of the CO2 objects for that year, and then we can calculate an average. So let's say I wanted to get the average for all of these objects here for 1958. Now to calculate this average over all of these 10 objects, we can use the dot aggregate function from Django's ORM. And to that, we pass all of the aggregations we want to achieve over that query set. So in this case, we want to calculate the average CO2, so I'll call it average, and we're going to use the average model from Django, and this is imported uh, by Django extensions. I'll try and find that here. So from Django.db.models, it's importing this average. We can use that in our aggregation, and all we need to do is pass to that a field that we want to calculate an average over. And in this case, the field will also be called average. That's the field on the model that's numerical. It's a float field. So we're going to specify that here within the argument. So this might be slightly confusing because we're naming everything average. But this keyword argument here is optional. We can call that whatever we like. And that will be the field in the dictionary, the name of the key and the resulting aggregation. This part here comes from Django. This is what you use in order to generate an average aggregation over a particular column. And that is the name of the column here. So that's the syntax for that. If we execute that, we get back a dictionary. The key corresponds to what we have here. And the value is 315. And that corresponds to the average over this particular query set. And we use Django's dot aggregate function to turn that whole query set into this particular number. So that's how we do this for 1958. But the question is, how do we do it for all of the distinct years in our data? Well, it's actually very simple to change this up. Instead of using aggregate, we're going to use annotate instead. So the query we're going to execute is quite similar to this, but it uses different functions. Now, I'm going to reference the documentation here. If we go back to this section here, this is on the aggregation page, and I'll link this in the description. But basically, there's a section here for the values function from Django's ORM. And this is the key part of this here, this paragraph. And it states that ordinarily, annotations are generated on a per object basis. So 
for every object in your query set, an annotation will return a result for every one of those objects. But when you use the dot values function to constrain the columns that are returned, then the method for evaluating annotations is different. So instead of returning a result for every item in your query set, there will be an item instead for the unique combinations of the fields in the values clause. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the values function to get all of the years from the query set. And then we'll use annotate to get the average over each of these unique years. So let's go back to our terminal and we're going to execute this now. So it's going to be co2.objects.values and we pass to that the date field from the model and then we use the year lookup. And this gives us all of the years in the data. And what we can then do is call dot annotate. And remember when we use dot annotate after the dot values function, it's going to create an annotation for the unique years in the data in this case. So what we're gonna do is we'll specify a key of average and we're gonna use the average model from Django and we pass to that the average field from the model. That gives us back this result here where we have a query set with a year, 1958, and then an average, which is a numerical value. So that's the query we're gonna to use to get the averages. So I'm gonna copy this out of the terminal and into our view. So if we go back to views.py and in this new function we've got at the bottom, I'm gonna paste that in here. And we're gonna set a variable here called averages. And as you can see, we need to import the average model from Django. So at the top, I'm gonna to paste in this import here from django.db.models import average. And now at this point, we're ready to start building the bar chart. So I'm gonna to go to Plotly's documentation for bar charts. And you can see at the top, the basic way to build bar charts. In this case, Plotly Express has a function called bar, and we're gonna use that in order to build a bar chart. And what that takes is X and Y data. The X data in our example is going to be the year, just as it is in this documentation. And in our case, the y-axis is going to be equal to the CO2 concentration, the average over all the values that year. Now, it's worth noting in the documentation, this is a data frame from Pandas, but you can also use normal Python lists with this function. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's go back to our VS Code. Now, what we need to do is get the x and y values. As I said, the x values are the years and the y values are the averages. Now we have these objects in the terminal. I'm gonna set them to a variable called averages, as you can see at the bottom. And when we look at that, we get our query set with our annotated averages. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna call a function called values list. And what that will do is we can return a list containing all of the elements in our query set. And we're gonna get the values for the year. So we're gonna use the date and then the lookup year here. And what that'll do is give us all of the unique values for the year in our query set. And if we pass a keyword argument, flat equals true, that will flatten that down into what looks like a normal Python list here. So that's gonna be our X data. So let's copy that out of the terminal and paste it into our view at the bottom here. X equals that particular statement. And the statement to get the Y data will be very similar. So I'm gonna paste that in and we can change the field name to average. If we look down below here, our averages, that's the name of the key in the dictionary containing the average for that year. So now that we have the X and Y data, we're gonna create a plotly graph and we're gonna call px.bar and we can pass X and Y data to that graph. And we can also give the graph a title by calling the figures update layout method and we can pass the text for that title. Now to convert the chart to HTML for our template, all we need to do is call the figures to HTML function and we can assign that to a variable called chart here and we can then include that in our context and then we'll render the original template, the same one we had in the previous video. That will work out of the box because that chart template is very simple. It contains a variable called chart. We mark that as safe and that will render the chart on our page. So that's all we need to do in the view to get this bar chart working. So what I'm gonna do is save that and we can exit the shell and run the Django server. And before we go back to the page, we need to add a URL that will map to this new view we've got. So let's go to urls.py. And below this path, I'm gonna paste another one which loads that new view. So if we now navigate to bar, we should be able to see this in action. So go to bar here, and hopefully this will load up a bar chart. And you can see the CO2 concentration over time increasing in this bar chart. And these are the averages for each year. So if we hover over a given year, uh, 1982, we can see the average for that year is 341, whereas the average for the current year is 416. Now, if you want your chart to have a bit more room here, you can increase the y-axis range. There's a very simple way to do that in Plotly. So if we go back to our views.py, 
we're going to change the code for this update layout function and I'm going to add another keyword argument which is y-axis range and we set that to a list with two values one is the lower boundary which is zero and the second value is the upper boundary for the y-axis we'll set that to 500 and if we now go back and refresh the page you should see that we have a bit more room and we can set this y-axis range to anything we want so it could be something crazy such as 2500 and that's going to change your chart considerably when we refresh the page here so set your values appropriately for the axis so the final thing I want to do in this video is we're going to add text to our bar charts there's a section in the Plotly documentation bar charts with text which I'll link in the description and basically this allows you to add text in different ways to your bar charts now what we're going to do is we're going to try and add it similar to what we have here where the text appears above the bars. So let's go back to VS Code and the way we're going to do this is we're going to set up a text list comprehension and this list comprehension is going to iterate over each average in our list of Y data here. This comes from the database, this is all of the averages and for each average we'll render an F string and in that F string we want to use the average and we want to specify that it's to one decimal place. And you can achieve that in the F string using that syntax there. And once we've set up the list comprehension, we can pass the text argument to our plotly.bar function. So text will be equal to the text we've set up here on line 44. And the final thing we need to do is if we go back to the documentation, there's a function here, the figure.update traces command. So I'm going to copy that and we can basically paste that in below our figure and that should hopefully do the job for us. So let's go back to our page and we can refresh this plot and now you can see even though the text is very small the number representing that average is above each of the bars so what I'm going to do is actually remove the decimal place so instead of one decimal place let's not have any if we save this we can go back to our page and you can see that the numbers are a little bit more visible now as there's more space for them to take up and that's it for this video it's a very simple video we're demonstrating how to use Django to aggregate over our query sets and we can then produce plotly charts based on those aggregations in this case we've got a bar chart for each year in our data we have an average so this is a reduction over our entire data set we're reducing each year which is 12 measurements one per month down to a single measurement using the average we then plot this very simply using the plotly express module it has a function for generating bar plots which we use we call the to html function to generate html which we then include in our context and render very simple in django and it works nicely with plotly so thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video